Good evening. Tonight we present the story of a man trapped within his own imagination. Simon Holmes is someone whose connection with reality is so weakened that he believes he is a superhero. Dr. Herman Maguire is an internationally renowned psychologist and author of the best-selling book, Monsters in the Closet. He has been observing Simon for the past few months and tonight we'll ultimately confront him regarding his delusional behaviour. Whilst this particular case may be considered highly specialised, it is important to recognise that it is not altogether unique. No patient is untouchable. No person is immune to analysis. So, how are you feeling today? I'm feeling positive. I'm certain he will return eventually. It's just a matter of time. It, it didn't happen today, but it will one day. I'm just looking forward to getting my powers back, to getting back on the job, so to speak. It won't be long. You referring, of course, to your former protege, a character who's come up many times in our discussions. Would you like to elaborate for the cameras? Um, Okay, yeah, um, it all goes back many years now. I'm not sure how long exactly. You lose track of time in this place. Events happened during my confrontation with Beelzebot. It was my fault. The signs were there. I just chose not to see them. I guess I just presumed his loyalty would endure no matter what. I was wrong. I know this can be a very difficult story for you to tell, but please try to continue. Well, ever since the car training incident, we hadn't been getting along well. His use of his powers had become, I felt, reckless and irresponsible. What I'd failed to realise is that he had aspirations beyond his natural capabilities. He wanted power. My power. He betrayed me to Beelzebot and stole my abilities for himself. And how did that make you feel? It completely changed who I am. As the element or my powers defined me. It's been hard adjusting. But it's okay. Play no good. We'll return. We'll repent. I will get my powers back. This ridiculous character of Beelzebot it goes under many names. Pyrosaur, Mega Doom, General Spike. However named, this Machiavellian figure bears close resemblance to the Jungian archetype of the Shadow. We see representations of this character commonly in popular modern culture, from George Lucas's Darth Vader to J.K. Rowling's Voldemort. This figure appears everywhere. What is your earliest childhood memory? Oh, um, I'm not sure. Um... I do have an early memory, don't know if it's the earliest, uh, it was me with my sister, no idea where it was or when it was. The memory is actually of me stealing sweets from her, uh, she cried, she cried a lot. I was given a big punishment for that, but what I really remember is crying. Do you think this event may have affected you in your later life at all? Well, I have always been a fierce foe of injustice. Fighting evil was my profession for nearly 15 years. 15 years? And you must have seen some fairly horrific events. Yes, yes, well, there's the blog on bloodletting, of course, need I say any more. That's possibly the most racist thing I've ever seen. Something that I did learn 
for my time on the front line was that ordinary people are just as capable of acts of cruelty as the mega-villains such as Robotron, Dr Hydrock or Lady Pain. I think it's important for society to realise that. These brutal, violent figures are often a product of desensitisation caused by grotesque televisual and cinematic imagery. One only has to look to the Matrix series, the works of Quentin Tarantino or Zizicki's Assassinator to see the exploitative methods being utilised upon the youth of today. Do you perhaps see any parallels between events in your early life and these fantastic figures you've been telling us about? I don't really know what you mean by that. Well, uh, to put it another way, would you agree there are any similarities between these important childhood figures and the villains you've been portraying in your recollections? Well, I suppose Madame Hawk could be said to have quite a few characteristics in common with my first girlfriend, a lovely girl. Interesting. Interesting. And what of Flamo Kid? Would you agree that your relationship with him mirrors your relationship with your siblings? No, I would not. There's no need to get defensive. No one's under attack here. Now, your sister, she died when you were still a child, is that correct? Yes. And you've an older brother, from whom you're now estranged. The potentially tragic later life consequences of damaging childhood experiences are why I am co-founder and vice chairman of the Pro-Child Happiness Alliance. Every small child must have the opportunity to reach for the stars. This is a problem which has persisted for too long and begs for a solution. Some might argue that these villains are nothing more than physical manifestations of your repressed emotions and psychosexual desires. That's a ridiculous suggestion. These kinds of delusions are common amongst patients who've suffered traumatic childhoods. They're not delusions. Although the specific format of your fantasies could be considered unusual, I think with reference to your personal history they can be understood. You're wrong, they're real. What you must realise is that you've never had superpowers, Simon. These villains aren't real. Flamo Kid isn't coming back because he doesn't exist. And you're not going to get your powers back because you never had any powers. You're sick, Simon, and I want to help you. It's not true. It's not true. I I think we'll leave it there for today. In the end, I do feel he attained some measure of acceptance. It is something which is inevitably hard upon patients, the realisation that an aspect of their life was nothing but a fabrication. I will of course be here to support him through this difficult time. The important news is that he has made the first step on the road to recovery.